the 33 years of celebrations and appreciation of Jesus Christ benevolence holds this September with the theme Power of the Gospel with Signs and Wonders. This powerful program starts with revival and celebrations from Monday, September 24 to Friday, September 28, 2018. with us. Jesus is Lord. Praise the Lord on earth for the high heavens. The Europe Assemblies of Christ Apostolic Church of Belitera is 33. The 33 years of celebrations and appreciation of Jesus Christ benevolence holds this September with the theme power of the gospel with signs and wonders. This powerful program starts with the title of celebrations from Monday, September 24 to Friday, September 28, 2018. <laughs>
Amen. Please sit down comfortably. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor good evening. Good evening. Do you know you are so special? special. No, tell that person, do you know you are so special? special. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself to your friend. Amen. And that's because you are so special. And that's the introduction done. Amen. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. But so that when you see these men and women of God, you can recognize them. You know, be saying, S -s 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 -s. so that you can call them because you can put a face to a name. Amen. And that's why you have introduced yourself to your neighbor because you have introduced yourself already. Amen. But you didn't get to know people that are on the altar. And that is what I'm going to do this short introduction. Amen. 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 On the altar tonight, we have Pastor Korede Adirumu. Pastor Paul Tayo. Pastor Ismaila Oladiti. Amen. Amen. And our father, one of our father's children, Pastor Ebenezer Ajiteno. Amen. Sitting very close to him is our own son of the shore, Dr. Adewale Alani Aki. Akabiru. Akabiru. I wanted him to say that Kabiru Kuyebi. Amen. Amen. I'm going to jump and then go to Pastor Adams and Koikia. Amen. And Pastor Abubaka. Abubaka. Yeah, it's true. He was a Muslim. He was Abubaka. Amen. Thank God for the power of the gospel. Amen. Amen. And sitting close to him is um, Pastor Enira Yeton Otu Shoti. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And I'll just introduce some of our mothers and then we'll go straight into action. Amen. 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 Amen, Amen. Amen. Amen now. And just, you see, she's finding herself because the weather is too good to be true. It's not the same in Ireland. <laughs> Amen. Our mother that is looking after our father in the Republic of Ireland, Evangelist Florence Kuyebi. Amen. Clapping and smiling. Smiling and smiling at me. Amen. Is one of our papa's children. Lady Evangelist, Mary Pye. Amen. 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 Well, I know some of you know her already, but certainly Dr. Hugh doesn't know her. That's why I'm going to introduce her before she comes on. She's a doctor as well. Whether it's the same discipline, I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Olupokola. Amen. Amen. I'm still coming. I don't want to do yours twice because if I do it twice, we'll be paying twice. Amen. But, children of God, I want you to rise to your feet. The man that God has made to be the set man, the one that by the grace of God, his ministry has brought every one of us together. Amen. Amen. Thirty odd years ago, I entered the trap. And it was a good trap. The trap of the gospel. And I'm still standing here to the glory of God. By the grace and the calling of this servant of God. The one that has reached so many people so many lives so many homes so many homes that are weeping that are sorrowful that have been comforted please children of god 
I want you to please clap the most clapping that you can for our Father Prophet Doctor S.K. Abiara, aka S.K. of No Many of you, you don't know the reason why we organize this program. God told me that we must be grateful. We must gather together and appreciate Him. That's why we organize this program. Psalm 92 verse 1, which is a good thing to appreciate God and to thank Him. We are here to thank Him, to appreciate Him, and we never deceive you. Today and tomorrow is a day of thanksgiving, a day of appreciation. That's why we are here. And I want to thank God for the life. I want to thank God for the life of all the minister here, particularly my friend. I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you so much. You are wonderful. We are going to thank God, appreciate him by singing this song. Every one of you raise up your two hands up. <clears throat> God is in our midst. The presence of God is very, very important. God can do without us. We can't do without God. Raise up your hand and sing this song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is hallelujah all over the 
a universe. Come on, shout hallelujah. Language is hallelujah. So when you sing the song of hallelujah, miracle signs and wonder will happen. Amen. I want you to sing the song. Forget about your problem. The power of gospel carry the miracle signs and wonders. You don't know how to fast. You can never fast. You can never pray. But you know how to worship the living God. Miracle signs and wonder will happen in your life. Yeah. I want you to sing the song once again before we pray. Just open your mouth and sing the song of Hallelujah. Don't feel too big in the presence of living God. In the kingdom of God, we are never not going to pray. No fasting in the kingdom of God. We are going to praise Him. Sing the song of Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Wow. appreciate him. That is what we are here to do. To appreciate him, to glorify him for what he has done for us. Join your hands together and eyes closed. Raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand to appreciate his presence. You know why you see the man of God? Here, yeah, this is a corporate anointing. And Christ Jesus said, if two or three gather together in my name, I will be there to do what? To perform miracle signs and wonders. So just open your mouth. The presence of God is here. And this is a corporate anointing. Raise up your hand. I'm nice close. Yes, Lord.
Jesus three times. The power and the blood of Jesus three times. Lord Jesus, we are here this evening. Empower us as we empower thunder, as we empower moon, as we empower sun, as you empower east and mountain, as we empower ages. Lord Jesus, empower us. Raise up your hands and pray. signs and wonders. Empower your minister, your son, that you want to use for us this night. As you continue to talk through him, let the power of miracle spread, touch every one of us. Raise up your hand and pray. For yourself, and you are watching this program all over the world. I believe that you are looking at this program, and God is there. Don't worry about your problem. I have a good news for you. John 14 1 says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in Him and trust in Him. He will surprise you. You don't need to kill yourself, you don't need to harm yourself. It will surprise you. Amen. Only you open your mouth and pray. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord Jesus, this is this man is my night. Touch me. Remove all the obstacles in my way. Remove all the sicknesses in all parts of my body. Raise up your hand and pray. That is a worldwide pastor and evangelist and bishop, Bishop uh, Ajitena, to pray on the prayer. I want you to say amen when you continue to pray. And miracle signs and wonder will happen amen. in your life. Amen. Before we listen to uh, Lady Evangel Bukola Sewele, I believe that we are going to dance today. If we, will, we will never wait for those who are late. And that's why. And because um, by the grace of God, sooner or later now I will be on television about three or four stations by the grace of God to let the people know that we want to appreciate God to people to come and join us to give thanks to God Almighty. Over to you to pray for them. Thank you, sir, for coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. our glorious Lord, we thank you for yet another wonderful moment in your holy presence. It is by your grace that we are gathered here tonight. Lord, we give you praise that you have counted us worthy to be part of the people that will live to share the testimonies of this year's convention. We give you praise, oh Lord, for the life of our daddy. We thank for your grace and your anointing upon his life. We thank you, Lord, because when he said, yes, he has touched the life of so many, and that is why we all gather here today to come and say, thank you, Jesus. And Lord and our God, as we have prayed tonight, let it be established. Yeah. Now, 
I declare by the authority of the King of Glory in this house, I declare answer to all our requests in the mighty name of Jesus. The wonders of today shall be yours. The wonders of the conference tomorrow shall be yours. The wonders of the remaining days shall be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is the need of every individual here, I command the fire of Holy Ghost because the Bible says the fire goes before him and consume all his enemies round about. Every round about enemy that would not want you to, 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 to celebrate, I command the fire of Holy Ghost to consume them now. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive the wonders of the moment. Receive the wonders of this convention. Receive the blessing of this season. From the beginning to the end of this program, the name of the Lord will be glorified. Your answer is here. Your blessing is here. Your celebration is here. And it is well with us. Every sickness, either physical or spiritual, I command you to get out. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive your miracle. And so shall it be. Father, at the end of the day, we ask, oh Lord, that you count us worthy to reign with you in eternity. We give you praise, oh Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's come for Jesus as we take our seat. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Well, um... Thank him tonight. If you can finger point at least one goodness of God in your life, you are indebted to him. Give him praise tonight. He demanded for it. Let the people praise you. Oh Lord, let the people praise you. So then the hell will yield his increase. And this God, our I admin, mean our own God, will bless us. Thank you, Jesus. We we'll bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Oni like lati se Boya to ri pe asoru won o won Abi boya pe won ti da pa But want to do something now Oni e so bi pe Olore mi kun le ni mo wa yi Oluwa e dara Bi e ba ni photo bi ju lati kun le fu E lo si ori e ku yin bayi E ma so pe Oluwa e dara Hallelujah Amen Olore mi o ni kun le mo ma wa yi Oluwa
servant of God to come and do what God has sent him. Amen. 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 About 27 years ago, myself and Pastor Denny went to a minister's conference in his church. The cornerstone. Amen. Amen. And since then, God had already established the connection. Amen. Amen. He's, in fact, he's one of the people that is still holding faith and is helping the faith to stand. I was in the meeting with one of the MPs, David Teams, and he well recognized you. That there are some father of faith that are still able to push the gospel. And one of the fathers of faith tonight, at least in the United Kingdom, I can say, is here to bless us. Is the president of the free churches. And by the grace of God, we have one of our own that is a trustee. Tonight, God has brought him to be a blessing. Since the establishment of this church, he has been part of the growth, part of the development, and part of the blessings. And that is why because of the integrity in the life of our father, Prophet Dr. S.K. Let's clap for Jesus for that. Let's clap for Jesus for that. There have been several churches that have come and gone. But the integrity is still keeping this church going. Amen. Amen. Children of God, I want you to rise to your feet tonight as I bring to microphone Dr. Hugh Osgood. Thank you so much, Reverend James. It's a privilege to be here tonight. And before we take our seats, I want to, on behalf of church leaders here in the UK, honor Prophet S.K. Abira. I think he's a great man of God. We're privileged to have him in this country to visit us. And I do want to say, on behalf of my fellow church leaders, just how much we value what you've established and how it's been transportable. What began in Nigeria was transported here. And we are just so grateful for what you've done. And we want to honor you tonight and to thank you so much. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let's say thank you properly for what God has done. Bless you. Thank you. Please take your seats. I'm sure it's not a coincidence that the first two letters of Prophet's 
surname are A and B. It always puts him at the top of every list I see. When a list is arranged alphabetically, Prophet Abiyara is at the top. <laughs> And I think that is appropriate. And that's what we want to acknowledge tonight. I'm very conscious that I'm only with you for this one evening. On what I know God wants to be a very important conference in your life. When we acknowledge what God has done through a man of God, if you were to ask Prophet Abiyara what he would want more than anything else, he'd want to see what God has worked in his life being effective in your lives. Because that is the greatest thing that we need. That sense of legs. I want to read from verse 17 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The gospel has power. And tonight I just want to look at three areas where we see the power of the gospel manifest. They are first of all our personal transformation. But it goes beyond that because the gospel can bring societal transformation. And ultimately the gospel will bring global transformation. So that is the power of the gospel. We need to know it first and foremost in terms of our own personal transformation. But as we are transformed, God wants to transform society. And as God transforms society, He's moving the agenda forward to the moment when there will be global transformation. There is no doubt that He who has begun a good work will bring it to completion. He who is the Alpha will also be the Omega. He who has laid the foundation stone will also bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. He is a God who completes that which He begins. And when Jesus cried on the cross, it is finished. It is proof that God completes that which he sets out in his heart. So many things in this world remain unfinished. Great schemes, great plans come to nothing. But God is one who keeps his work. And he who has begun a good work will bring it to completion. But what is the power of the gospel as far as our personal transformation is concerned. You see today you can go to any bookstore and you can buy self-help books. Most of these self-help books have taken gospel principles and recycled them with key ingredients missing. We used to, in the early days when I was church planting, have all of the church gather in our home. It was in the beginning when we didn't have so many. And one of the things that used to happen was that the ladies in the church would swap recipes. 
And one day, one of the ladies said to my wife, she said, it is so good that we are saved, because you know, in the world when they swap recipes, they always leave out a vital ingredient. So it never tastes as good when you make it, as it did when they made it. So my wife, she said to this lady, so what was the special ingredient in that apple tart that you gave us last week? And she said, ah, it's the cinnamon. So my wife said, I'm sorry to tell you, but you forgot to tell me that there was any cinnamon in the apple tart. <laughs> that was an accident. But what the world does, it takes Christian principles and recycles them without Christ and without the cross and gives them back to us and says, this will guarantee your success. All the success handbooks that you can find on the bookstore will not transform you if they've left out the vital ingredients. And the vital ingredients for transformation are the power of Christ and the power of the cross. Hallelujah. And we need to see that. And one of the tragedies in church today is we hear transformation messages preached. We hear empowerment messages preached. We hear messages preached which says you've got everything inside you that you need to succeed in this world. But it isn't true. If you're not born again by the Spirit of God, you have not got that which inside you which it takes to transform the world. You can do certain things, you can make certain adjustments, you can release certain things from your life, but the real distinctive change that needs to come only comes when we have a personal encounter with Christ and we understand the power of the cross. Paul was so aware of that, that he said when he went to Corinth, he didn't want to preach anything other than Christ crucified. Because he knew that in that city there needed to be a transformation. It was known as one of the most corrupt cities. It was a port city. It was a city where there were very immoral patterns of behavior. In fact, when you read the Corinthian letter and you discover what the lives were like of people in church before they got saved, you probably wouldn't have wanted to be in the Corinthian church. But the power of the gospel could bring change because it was the power of the cross. It was the power of Christ. And when Paul came and preached there, he left nothing out. He said, you need an encounter with Christ. And you need to know the power of the cross in your life. Now very often when we preach about the power of the cross, we limit it to that very important but not totally transformative experience of forgiveness. We need to be forgiven. The moment we are forgiven, the chains fall off, the burden comes off our lives. We are no longer living under the weight of sin. It's great to be set free. It's great to know we're forgiven. It's great to know that on the cross Jesus took our place and paid the price for us. We know the wages of sin are death. We know that in order to be freed from the guilt someone had to die that death. And praise God Jesus died that death for us that we might rise up in newness of life in Him. But the power of the cross is not limited to forgiveness. There is also a transformative power in the cross which can actually come and cut back the fleshliness of our own hearts. You see, in the Old Testament, really what God wanted to do was to circumcise human hearts. That's what He wanted to do. From the time of the Garden of Eden, when people rejected the tree of life and ate instead of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, they had been living off a surfeit, an overgrowth of the flesh. You see, if you go up to someone in the street and say to them, uh, excuse me, are you dead or alive? They will tell you they're alive. But the Bible says they're dead in their trespasses and sins. So how come they're walking around? How come they're managing to get past their exams? How come they're managing to make a living? They're doing it in the strength of their flesh. It's all done in the power of their human will, the strength of their emotions, their personality, their character. We've all been there. We've all lived like it at some point. But when we come to Christ, there's something about the power of the cross that says you're no longer going to live from that source. There's a better source from which you can live. You see, 
When they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says they died. Actually, they didn't drop to the ground and die, but something on the inside of them died. They lost that vital connection with God. They became spiritually dead. And when we come to Christ, the power of the cross not only cuts back our flesh, but makes it possible for us to become spiritually alive. We then have a new source by which we live. We're no longer just living from our will, our emotions, our strength of character. We are living from that vital link that our spirit then has with the Spirit of God. That's why we're told if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You see, the power of the cross is more than forgiveness. The power of the cross is totally transformative. If you allow yourself to be crucified with Christ, you also begin to experience the power of His resurrection life. This is what the Gospel is about. This is why the Gospel is so powerful in its transformative effect. One of the things that disturbs me is that so many believers have only grasped a little bit of the Gospel. The good news is really good news. It is that you can be alive in Christ in a way that you've never lived before. And yet sometimes I wonder whether Christians really know the abundance of life that is theirs in Christ Jesus. You know sometimes it's as if we've been to the shop to get the goods, but we've just come away with the packaging and left the goods on the counter. But the reality is this, that as soon as you realize that God's got more for you than you've received, you can always go back and ask for what you've left on the counter. As soon as you see in Scripture that there's more to have, as soon as you see in the Bible that the power of the Gospel is greater than you realize, as soon as you can see that there's more to the cross than you thought, and more to an encounter with Christ than you've experienced, you can always go back and say, I want to have what I've left behind. I know some people say that on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came, 120 people spilling out of that upper room, they knew the power of God. They had been transformed. Jesus has said, don't go out on the streets and preach until you've received power from on high. He said they couldn't even be witnesses of the resurrection. That must have been difficult. They had seen the risen Lord with their own eyes and yet they were told they were not to go out on the streets and say Jesus is alive until he was alive in them as well. It wasn't just a case of having witnessed resurrection life. They needed to experience resurrection life. And when they spilt out on the streets of Jerusalem on that Pentecost day, they knew life within them. They spent ten days seeking God. They looked at what the prophet Joel said. That when the Spirit of God comes, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They knew that when they went out on the streets. And everyone who saw them knew that they'd been transformed. They could see the life of God in them. They could see that these people had died to self and were living to Christ. And Peter made a promise. He said, if you repent and are baptized for the forgiveness of sins, you too will receive the Holy Spirit. I want to just ask you this. Do you think the 3,000 who repented and were baptized receive the Holy Spirit in the same way as the 120. I do! And I'll tell you why, because if they didn't, I think there would have been the longest line outside Peter's house that you could possibly imagine. You said we would have what you've got. But what we have doesn't match what you've got. So I believe they received. I believe the church didn't begin with just 120 people empowered with the Spirit. By the end of that first day, it was 3,120 people empowered by the Spirit. And I believe the same pattern continued. And I believe that we need to have that same mentality today. Because when Peter stood up, he said, the promise is to you. And bless them, they received it. But he said, and it's to your children. And to your children's children. And those who are afar off. 
Which means that our entitlement today is exactly the same as the entitlement of the people that were there on that first day of Pentecost. You should not receive anything less. Our children should not receive less than we've got. Some of us have got medical backgrounds and I've got a bit of a medical background but I've got a PhD in something different so we won't compare notes. I think you must have an extra one in dance and singing as well as whatever job you've got. But I know this much from a medical point of view that the way vaccination works is that that particular toxin gets passed through one to another to another to another until it has become weakened to the point where it only inoculates you and doesn't kill you. I think that some people have got a gospel mentality that's a bit like that. It's now gone through so many generations that the cross of Christ won't kill you, it just inoculates you. Actually the cross of Christ is meant to kill you. It's meant to say, let's make an end of the flesh and let's make a new beginning in your life. So the good news is that the good news is not like a vaccination. It doesn't weaken through the generations. In fact, by God's grace, our children should be as much empowered as they were on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And our grandchildren too. Amen. And those of you who haven't got grandchildren, just wait, it will come upon you sooner than you expect. Amen. I always say my first grandchild was born prematurely. He was actually, a few months prematurely. But I felt as if it was about 40 years prematurely, to be honest. <laughs> And now when he comes and looks down and says to me, Are you alright Grandad and can I park my car in your car park? I think, how on earth did that happen to someone as young as I am? <laughs> but praise God, the children and the children's children can know exactly the same power of God. It doesn't dilute. The Gospel is for personal transformation. And here it's really clear it says the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. Can you see there's been a turn of direction? Once we were heading for the grave, but now we're heading for glory. Once we were perishing, but now by God's grace we're being saved. And ultimately we'll know new bodies and know that tan total transformation. Hmm. The world didn't realize what God was offering. Such a power, such a transformation. But actually, part of the reason why God works such a transformation in us is so that the world might know. God does not want His transformative power to be kept a secret. One of the ways in which the world should know the power of the Gospel is through the way in which we love one another. <laughs> I'm responsible at the moment for representing about 24 denominations in this country. I have to represent the Methodist, the Baptist, United Reformed Church, the Salvation Army, the Assemblies of God, and the list goes on and on and on. But the incredible thing about that, and, and CAC is definitely in that list, I can tell you. But you know, what I want to see in the midst of that diversity is not a uniformity. It would be so boring if we were all the same. Particularly as God is so creative. If He's so creative, why does He make us all the same? He makes us different. But actually, the differences that we have are the greatest opportunity presented to us to show what love really is. The world is very good at loving that which is like itself. <laughs> but you offer the world something that's not like itself, it doesn't know what to do, does it? But the church should be setting an example that no matter how diverse we are, the love that we have for one another is a testimony. When you get born again, it says that the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And the first reason that love is shed abroad in your heart is because you and I need to know that God loves us. But the second reason it's there is so that we can then begin to express that love towards one another. When Peter walked along the shore with Jesus, Jesus asked him a question. Remember Peter had denied him three times. So the first question Jesus said to him is, do you love me more than these? 
because he boasted that even if all of these forsake you, I will not forsake you. So he says, do you love me more than these? Peter said, Lord, do you know that I like you? He uses a different Greek word. So Jesus says to him a second time, because this is a restorative process, three times he denied, three times he's going to have an opportunity now to say the right thing. So Jesus says to him again, Peter, do you love me? And he says, Lord, you know that I like you. He actually used the word filio. I have a brotherly affection for you. So the third time, you know, Jesus doesn't say this time, do you love me with the love of God? He says, Peter, do you have a brotherly affection for me? He says, oh Lord, you know that I've got a brotherly affection for you. Why couldn't Peter say, yes, I do love you with the love of God? He was just being honest. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet been given and the love of God had not yet been shed abroad in his heart. But after the day of Pentecost, he had no such excuse. If you'd gone up to Peter after the day of Pentecost and said, do you love God with all of your heart? He'd have said, yes, I love God with all of my heart. I love the Lord Jesus not just as a brother, but I love him as my Lord and Savior. That's part of the transformative power of the gospel. It's part of what the world needs to see. The power of the gospel can transform society. <coughs> but did you notice that what it says is this? The gospel is a huge challenge to society. Because you've got the Greeks that are looking for wisdom. And the wisdom of God is very different from the wisdom of man. God knows that through wisdom, man never really came to know God. So he says, there's another way. I'll reveal myself. I'll reveal myself to people who are humble enough to receive it. Now that doesn't fit with Greek wisdom at all. Greek wisdom is making yourself cleverer and cleverer and cleverer until you know everything. But in reality, you still know nothing because you haven't had an encounter with God. But the wisdom of God says, look, I want to touch everyone's life here. So I can reveal myself to even someone who hasn't got a great intellect. Because it's about my wisdom, not about their wisdom. And you know when that starts happening, society gets confused. What is this salvation that we don't have to earn? You notice how hard it is to get beyond the pride that always wants to earn something. But salvation is a gift. It has to be. If it was something that you had to climb up the intellectual heights to get, a lot of the world would have no access. If it was something that you had to buy, a lot of the world would have no access. So God actually sets the barrier right down there. But you know, more people miss it than find it because they can't humble themselves enough to get down that low. So wise people pass it by and say, that's not my kind of wisdom. The kind of wisdom that promotes the fools is not my kind of wisdom. But can you see what a challenge to society it is? The gospel has the power to change society. You know, everywhere I go in the world, People like to sing, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has come. See, you all know it. Go on, carry on. This is, yeah, we could go on. But you know, when you read the original context of that, it's not saying what you think. You know, most people say, well, let's praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's the 27th of September, 2018. Yes, God has made the 27th of September 2018, but that's not what he's talking about in the psalm. The context is this. The stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So what it is saying is this. That when God caused his son who had been rejected to be raised up in newness of life. He was ushering in a new day. He was saying, from this day forward, the principle is this. That which the world rejects can become the most significant 
part of the building. And that's why we need to rejoice. Because that day began 2,000 years ago and it hasn't ended yet. And when we sing, this is the day, we're saying, this is the day when God takes the stones that the builders reject and makes them the chief cornerstone. So let's rejoice and be glad in it. Because if he did it for Jesus, he can do it for you, he can do it for me, and he can do it for society. But it's such a big challenge to society. Society doesn't like it. But look at the way it works. I think this is really amazing. In verse 19 it says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding and the improvement. In the very next verse it says, so where is the wise? You see, as soon as God has declared I will destroy it, it actually means that the wisdom of the wise no longer counts in the way that it did. It's alright, I'm not putting an end to university education. I've got three degrees, and if you pay me enough, I'll give you one of them. But, uh, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> but I am saying that God's turning things upside down. When Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first, he's saying society needs to see things differently. And this is why the gospel can transform. And when you and I live the lives that we should, it's a challenge to the world. When we love one another the way we should, it's a challenge to the world. When we demonstrate the resurrection power of Jesus, who can take a sinner and turn them into a saint, it's a challenge to the world. When we can say, I might have three degrees or no degrees, but it doesn't make any difference because that's not how I get into the kingdom of heaven. I might have a smart car or I might drive around in one that you know you don't think is even going to make it to the end of the road. But that doesn't matter because that's got no bearing at all on how you get into the kingdom of God. I could get into the kingdom of God and be living on benefits. I don't think God will leave you in that condition, but He can save you in that condition. I can come to God when my life is such a mess that no one has got any hope for me. Even the psychiatrists have given up. That doesn't mean that God's given up. But it's a challenge to society. And this is what it's saying here. That God turns things upside down. The Jews are looking for a sign. Hmm. And the Greeks are seeking for wisdom. I know where I'm going with this message. I'm going to tell you right now. The gospel with signs and wonders. You are the sign. You are the wonder. That's what the world needs to see. Go back into what it says in Isaiah. I know it's speaking about Israel, but it has a wider application. In Isaiah 8 and verse 18, it says this. Here am I, and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. What does that mean? It doesn't just mean we do signs and wonders, although by God's grace we do. It means we are signs and wonders. It means that when the world looks at us, it sees something that it can't fathom. When the world looks at us, it has to stop and wonder, how did that happen? And it's that wondering that begins to work in people's lives. I know I was challenged as a student. I thought I'd be so clever. I went to the library, I got all the theological books off the shelf and I thought I'll read all of these before I go to university. I, they think I'm so clever. <laughs> Discovered it didn't mean a thing. You got no relationship with Jesus. And there were students that started praying for me. You know, they were so gracious. So I made it so hard for them. I was so critical of some of my fellow students in my first year at university. But they didn't give up. They were quite annoying that they were so persistent. But in the end, they broke up the hard ground. Because I wasn't good ground for the gospel. I was a bit like that path that had been trodden on so often that everything was sort of condensed. 
I was almost hardened against the gospel. But praise God for people that persisted in ploughing up my life. I want you to see one more verse as I bring this to a close and we just pray for a moment or two. Personal transformation. The power of the gospel. The encounter with Christ and the power of the cross. Societal transformation. It's the same challenge of the gospel that takes that stone which the builders reject and makes it the chief cornerstone. That says those who are nothing can be the ones that God chooses. He takes the things that are not to bring to nothing the things that are. I thought I was something, but God had to bring me to nothing in order to save me. And he wants to do that to society. But there is a verse in 1 Corinthians that says this. The reason God does all of this, the reason, as it says in verse 28, that he takes the base things of the world and things which are despised, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, he does it that no flesh should glory in his presence. I just want to tell you that will be the ultimate transformation. Can you imagine a world in which no flesh glories in his presence? But all the glory goes to him. Can you imagine a world where wars have ceased because the arrogance that causes wars, I'm better than you are, has been brought to nothing. My guns are bigger than your guns, you know. That's just the arrogance of the flesh. Once flesh has stopped glorying in God's presence, we will begin to see the real glory of God. So the power of the cross, the power of Christ, the power of the gospel transforms us and has power to transform society. And there's power to bring about that ultimate transformation. And the way that society will be transformed and the way that that ultimate transformation will take place is because you, my brothers and sisters, and I are prepared to be signs and wonders in this world. You see, on the day when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus had said, you will receive power from on high and you shall be my witnesses. He didn't say, you shall receive power from on high and you will have to try and go out and witness. He said, you will be a witness. You will be a challenge to the world. You will be a challenge towards those people who have not yet given their life to Christ. You will be a sign to them that there is a way in which they too can know this life. Just as the 120 that spilled out from the upper room were assigned to the 3,000 that said yes to Christ that day. Our lives can be a testimony. We can be signs and wonders. I want to pray for you. I want you to pray for yourselves too. So I pray first. Father, I just want to thank you for this word. Because this word is in your word. It's the very essence of what you say the gospel is. It is the power of God. And we take hold of that power for our personal transformation. We recognize that we can be a challenge to society and part of ushering in that ultimate fulfillment. And so, Lord, as we realize that, we take hold of it and believe for it. And right now, let's lift up our voices together and pray for ourselves. Father, we cry out to you. We thank you, Lord, that you want us to be a sign and a wonder. We do, Lord, want our light to so shine before men that they might see our good works and glory.
glorify our Father which is in heaven. We determine now in the power of the Spirit that we will not hide our lamp under that basket, but we will let our light shine. We declare that we will not hold back in our love for our brothers and sisters, but we will let the world know that we've been transformed by the agape love of Christ. We will let the world know that we don't just regard Jesus as a friend, but we regard him as our Savior, whom we love with all of our hearts. We cry out for that agape love of God to flood us afresh. We cry out to you, Lord, for anything that we left behind that you want to give us. We want to receive it now. We want to be those testimonies. We want to grasp the reality of this salvation. We don't want a vaccination from the gospel. We want the full power of the gospel. We want to know the power of the cross that makes an end of the flesh. We want to know the power of the Spirit that brings in that life of God into our hearts and our minds. And Lord, as we cry out to you, we want to thank you that your word says that your Spirit gives life to our mortal bodies. We believe that as we rise up in that strength of the Spirit, the life that you put within us can transform every sickness, every disease, everything that's limiting us in our bodies. We will be a sign. We will be a wonder. We will be a testimony to the world around us. Even though the fire should come upon us, we declare we will not be consumed. Just as people such as Moses would turn aside to see a burning bush that was not consumed, so let the power of God be on us in a way that we are not consumed and become a testimony to those around us, that they can look and they can see the transformative power of God. Lord, I want to thank you for what you're doing in this conference. I want to thank you for what you're going to do in the other sessions. But I want to thank you right now that we're taking hold of this reality. That when we say the gospel will be preached with signs and wonders, we acknowledge that we are signs and we are wonders. That we'll be there as the gospel is preached. People won't just hear the gospel in word. They'll see it lived out before them in our lives. So Lord, make us those signs. Make us those wonders. In the power of your spirit we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord bless you. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. Now we stand on our feet. This is a wonderful message. And I want you to stress your answers to the man of God. The Lord shall increase his anointing. The Lord shall be with him. Shall we begin to pray? Shall we begin to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we stress our hands unto you. More anointing, more grace, more power. More anointing. More transformation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I have a one prayer point and I salute every one of you. I celebrate every one of you in the house and all my generals and my fathers. Thank you for giving me this privilege. Can we raise our two hands? There's only one prayer point. Father, I need the power of transformation. Look at me. The evidence of being a Christian is for your life to be transformed. Hallelujah. And one of the signs that people will see that we go for prayer or anniversary is transformation. If there is no transformation, what will it, what, will, what do we say? After the attempt of anniversary in the Shiloh, the Bible says the life of Anna was changed. Father, I need a change. I want you to pray. This is a, we need this power. I need a change. Marutia la Torikata. Peter was a common person, but immediately he received the power of transformation. Peter began to begin to do wonders. We are for signs and wonders. Father, I need your power. Transform me. Transform my home. Transform my ministry. Please, I want you to pray with fire. Pray with fire. I need transformation. My ministry must be transformed. Shall we begin to pray? Shall we begin to pray? Father, I need this transformation. Monilo is I need this transformation. Father, I need a change. I need a testimony. I need a change. I need a testimony. Father, I must become a signs and wonders. This power of gospel must stop me to become a signs and wonders. 
Ontario. I must carry the wonders. I must carry signs. Ah, we're going to be here with the teacher Yano. Are you going to come to Yano? Hey, Nicole. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Stress your hearts. Tabari Agbara, don't want fear. Koko Shopo. Tabari, we don't want fear. Do a Shopo. Tabari, job at home and money lend no money no at work. Tabari Agbara, don't want any lossy churches. Mama Mary Church. We destroy that power in the name of Jesus. Every power that want us to pray in vain. Every power that want to disturb our blessing. Every power that doesn't want us to have a testimony. The power of gospel has brought us far. We need more testimony. For now, every evil kingdom of darkness will destroy them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You are the owner of my soul. Alpha and Omega. You are worthy to be praised. In all generations, there is no Jesus Christ, every offering that you have brought in here today, 
Praise the Lord of our the high heavens. The Europe Assemblies of Christ Apostolic Church at Balaitura is 33. The 33 years of celebrations and appreciation of Jesus Christ's benevolence holds this September with a theme, Power of the Gospel with Signs and Wonders. This powerful program starts with revival and celebrations from Monday, September 24 to Friday, September 28, 2018. Hello, viewers around the globe. My name is Evangelist Dr. Rachel Olabukala Akiade, known as Shamele Jesu. By the grace of God, I will be ministering at the 33rd uh, anniversary of CS Abalatura in Peckham, starting from 24th of this month, September to 30th. I will be glad to see you there. I will be ministering like I want to see the day, oh, Shamele Jesu, to see the day, oh. The host is our Papa, the general evangelist to the whole world. Papa, Prophet Dr. SK Abiara. I'll be glad to see you. Thank you. Celebrate with us. Jesus is Lord. Praise the Lord on earth to the high heavens. The Europe Assemblies of Christ Apostolic Church at Balaitura is 33. The 33 years of celebrations and appreciation of Jesus Christ's benevolence holds this September with a theme, Power of the Gospel with Signs and Wonders. This powerful program starts with revival and celebrations.